Hello everybody, uh, tonight I am here to talk about Game of Thrones and what I think because apparently people are really upset, like even my friends, everybody is upset, everybody's like they didn't get enough information, uh, mm, stories left untold, uh, even the New York Post here is saying uh, Game of Thrones that her character just totally wigged, flipped out and uh, now Danny is she is just something else you know so um what i think now this is my take on game of thrones ending you know i say the ending was very extremely perfect you know what i'm saying there there wasn't um how could i explain this okay it it was a surprise like everybody expected i was expecting when i talked to other people everybody was like you know, Danny's gonna die. John's gonna die. Somebody's gonna die. Somebody's gonna get to the throne. Seriously, gonna have the throne. Jane's gonna. Have the Somebody's gonna have the throne. But nobody was ever like, that in order to break the wheel, you gotta destroy the throne. You know, so nobody actually imagined the throne being destroyed. So amidst all this chaos, my thing is, how come nobody is pointing the finger at? how much similarity this this show has to um lord of the rings oh man lord of the rings hidden right before your eyes um you know game of thrones lord of the rings lord of the thrones game of the rings you know you can interchange it the game of thrones so the winner of the game gets the throne lord of the rings the lord of the ring gets the ring you know and these things, the same, it's the same symbology. There was a uh, object of great power that was created long ago by a certain f type of forging of fire. And this object that was created by the special fire um, is sought after. And anybody who wants it never will release it. You have to kill them to get it, pretty much. And that's... um. That's Lord of the Rings in a nutshell. If you guys haven't seen Lord of the Rings, spoiler alert. I, I was telling my friend the other day, I was like, look, if somebody were to watch the Lord of the Rings, the Hobbit trilogy, followed by Lord of the Rings, and then the next day try to like start the, start the Game of Thrones, they would probably know what the end of Game of Thrones would be like, knowing that if you told them that the artist was really like J.R. Tolkien, George R. R. Martin really liked J.R. Tolkien because he made its author name very similar to that guy. They would be able to tell the end of the thing and be like, oh, this is Game of Thrones, so everybody wants the throne. So obviously the throne's going to have to get destroyed in order for this to end the same way that Lord of the Rings ended. you know. And that in itself, so then basically he gave us, he hid the ending in plain sight. George R. R. Martin, he's telling us this whole time how much he loves Lord of the Rings because Boromir died and it was one of the only shows back in the 90s, even the books were made back before then, but it was one of the only sagas like Rocky where the where main characters were dying. Frodo lost a finger, Gandalf fell in the pit, you know, so there people were dying, nobody was safe. This was like a candy fairy tale like every other story was back in the day. So he really wanted to stick that home and he gave it to us. He gave us the, the darkness and light. Now, people are like, why didn't any main characters die? Well, that's very simple. Because if um, if you had a story and you were writing a story and there was 30 different people within the story, you're going to take the point of view of the person that makes it to the very end of the story so you can get the point of the story across from at least somebody's point of view. And being that the Starks, knowing what we know now, that Bran Stark was going to get to where he was, why not follow along the journey of Bran Stark, you know, and be intricately um intimate with him and his family same thing with uh the lannisters Tyrion and the lannisters made it to the last two episodes um daenerys you know so they focused and if and they kind of focused on them like remember there was used to be stannis he was getting time the boltons were getting time uh the veil was getting time but they weren't really major contributors so you know and, that, and that's that but my whole point of this my whole point of this is just let everybody know don't um don't belittle the fact that this show was the answer was hidden in plain sight and it was based off of lord of the rings you know Arya sailing to the west just like an elf john going to the north 
He's going to the north. Bran sends him to the north just to appease Grey Worm. But Bran knows that when Jon makes it to the north, the, the wall is no longer needed. Everybody in the north is just going to go back to the real north and just settle the land up there, you know, with the so, quote unquote wildlings and have a nation there. He's already a king. He's already a king of the north. They're going to they're going to make him royalty when he goes. So there's no Night's Watch anymore, you know. Um, and uh, Sansa, she becomes the, the queen, you know. And that's pretty much it. I mean, uh, oh, and one thing that you guys didn't, a lot of people didn't realize, was uh, Tyrion. Tyrion was, uh, what did he do? Tyrion, he's reading the book. So Sam walks up at the end of the book, another Lord of the Rings gesture. Sam's like, look, check this out. I wrote this book called A Song of Ice and Fire, paying homage to the Hobbit, uh, Hobbit there and back again, or whatever the name was. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'll read it. And so Tyrion is reading the book. And he's turning the page, talking, bullshitting, ha, ha, ha. And he gets to, like, page four. And he's like, ugh, what the hell? And it's a facial expression. He's totally, totally disgusted. And so in that moment, you know, what happened was, if you don't know what was happening, he's reading the first episode. And in the first episode, he finds out that Cersei and Jaime were doing the do and... I don't know if you read up to the part where they pushed Bran out the window, but so apparently that's the first time he's getting the information about his brother and sister and he just slams the book closed. Like, okay, that's enough of this game of Thrones story that you guys are talking about. I don't want to hear anymore. <laughs> I don't know if he believes it or not, but my thing is I really liked the end of the show just on the simple fact of the Lord of the Rings. It was just so much Lord of the Rings in it. You know, even, even the desire for the throne when Danny kills everybody, that means she was willing to. She is willing to just go all out for the throne, like it had taken over her. Yeah, John killing her. Actually, that part though, I ain't gonna lie. I was kind of upset. Like I really, what I wanted the ending to be was John and Daenerys on the throne. In peace, you know. Like and John's hand is married to uh, Sansa, so they're you know you tied up. For Tyrion go to the Winterfell and live happy ever after with Sansa. John and Daenerys live on the throne happily ever after, and you've got the North and King's Landing tied up together in unison with their independence. But you know, it didn't happen that way. John became a King Slayer, or I should say, a Queen Slayer, and went against his whole character kit, which is. Yeah, everybody was just going against what they were doing at the very end. Once the throne was destroyed, or being about to be destroyed, like at the very climax, people were doing things that were out of character um, for the throne. So, you know, because I don't think I don't think John knew that Drogon was going to melt the throne, you know, and uh, so he was actually thinking probably to himself he's going to take the throne after she goes down he probably didn't know what was going to happen you know with Grey Worm and them or the dragon going to kill him but so John really John really um a lot of people probably say John was a let down to them because uh he he was you know he's he's a Aegon like he's or whoever Aegon Targaryen like the whole show is built about this secret and then the secret comes out, and then they really just do nothing with the secret. Like, it just causes some strife. The people never find out. Everything is destroyed. But that's the thing. In order to destroy this, quote-unquote, precious, my precious, the throne, you know, all that's got to go with it. They'll pass, you know, because they laughed at the idea of voting. So the Targaryen rule, the ancestry, the wheel the 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 what do you call it where you have a monarch or whatever like a single rule government handed down through children you know what i'm saying like a hierarchy um that's got to stop so the voting was nice and then bran of course like that <laughs> bran making it to the throne like really that part right there i i what i mean he doesn't there is no throne so Technically, Bran is just in control of the civilians. There's no king. 
he's the ruler, I guess you would call him the president, but that was kind of like, I was shocked. I wasn't shocked, but I was more like, I was almost let down, but then I kind of laughed my ass off because, of course, the dude with all the brain power, why why would he put himself on the throne? He's just like, hey, he has the he can see the future, see the past. He's probably the most brilliant person on the show, like the smartest person knows everything. So, freaking, might as well be king. You know what I'm saying? There, there, there's, there's pretty much nothing, nothing that Bran can't do that anybody else could do as a king that would be better. So it is the best king that the Westeros could provide. It does set up another era, okay? Because you have this king who's a three-eyed raven, right? Now, remember Bran, when he became the three-eyed raven, the other raven had to, I think, pass it down to him. So Bran could actually make make it an election in the Senate as a secret society where the three-eyed raven becomes, you know, the king. So whoever is elected king is morgued into the three-eyed raven and Bran dies before you die, something like that. That would be like in the future. Maybe Arya goes off to the West. And that's another video. But I want to stick to the topic here. The topic is Lord of the Rings hidden right before our eyes. Such a great video. Um, such a great such a great ending. Nobody expected it. And you can't please everybody. Please yourself. Figure out why that they did this. And... Uh, Let's see what the future is. They're talking about prequels. There's a lot of history back there. I would love to see Dance of Dragons. Um, oh yeah. Also, speaking of uh, history, it was pro- it was prophesied that Cersei would die being choked to death, strangled to death by her younger brother. So Cersei did die that way. People were upset about that, but. Her younger brother Jamie came out second in the twin birthing, and um, maybe he killed her. Maybe he's, and before the rocks fell on her, maybe he wanted to um, give her a painless death, so he suffocated her till she blacked out, and then just strangled her to death, and then the rocks fell. You know that could have happened. You know, according to the prophecy, that would have been like a mercy kill by her brother. Um, Yeah, so I mean, Cersei, she did her part. Jamie, they did their part. Uh, you know, everybody's doing their part. It was, it was. It, I mean, yeah, Tyrion becoming the Hand. I, I'm, I'm actually happy. Grey Worm went back, and then the last thing was um uh, the, the, the Daenerys. I think she may be reviving. Drogon may have taken her. I was really shocked to see Drogon pick her up and fly across the sea. So he's obviously flying. If they're in King's Landing, the nearest sea is going to uh, Essos or the other land across the ocean. So they're going over there where he's probably going to try to get her revived. So there's a lot of things that could happen in the future. Well, guys, I guess that's it for me. Um... You guys all, uh, if anybody's out there, you know, of course, like, like, subscribe, and I'll be posting videos about random things, but we're going to, we're going to get back into the new, the new season of Game of Thrones, which is episode one, season one of uh, Song of Ice and Fire, the same thing that we've already seen. We're going to get back into that and watching that over again, so stay tuned and get the full review of what we think about the show knowing what we know following each scene and also we get to see the characters go back in time when they're all young like 10 years ago so yes they have all aged 10 years and to be honest they look very nice for their age um they fit their roles more i remember they did a couple of them did look kind of young back in um the early seasons um but they are all getting to their age and they're looking quite nice.